Hi, it's Dr. Berlin for Reverie Sleep Systems. Every day at our chiropractic practice, I help new and expecting moms with neck, back, and hip pain that's either caused by or exacerbated by poor sleep. If you're like my patients, then you're constantly moving around piles of pillows to try and find a comfortable position. Do your body a favor and check out the Reverie Power Bed. The Reverie Power Bed works with most existing mattresses and adjusts at the touch of a button, lifting your back and or your legs into positions that can alleviate pressure and improve circulation. It's no wonder Reverie has won the Women's Choice Award for six years straight on its power beds and that over 98% of women who purchased a Reverie Power Bed would recommend it to a friend or family member. Do you want better sleep? Visit momsneedsleep.com slash Berlin for more information. That's momsneedsleep.com forward slash Berlin. Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast, empowering new and soon-to-be parents to make informed choices pertaining to pregnancy, childbirth, and parenting. I'm Dr. Elliot Berlin, prenatal chiropractor, childbirth educator, and labor doula, living and practicing in Los Angeles, California. Today we are chatting about empowered birth uh, and double standard twins and other types of birth that used to be standard and no longer are. And uh, we have an obstetrician who practices literally out of the box. A power couple who had three babies at home under his care, and my guest host, Kira Soltanovich, a hilariously entertaining comedian, writer, actor, and producer, and most recently, reproducer. Kira has <laughs> a one-hour stand-up special on Amazon that was shot while she was seven months pregnant called You Did This to Me. She co-hosts a game show called Win Sanity, and she has a popular parenting podcast of her own called The Kira Soltanovich Show. I'm really thrilled that you're here with us today. Laughter to me is medicine, and uh, with so much fear and judgment around pregnancy and childbirth, um, we need that kind of medicine. So, thanks for doing what you do, and thanks for being Yay! here. Yay! I'm today. ecstatic to be here. It's my favorite topic to talk about. Birth or everything, just twins? anything kid related. <laughs> everything is your favorite. Everything, topic. Topic. everything is, is my favorite. favorite. Of recent, did you ever talk about babies before you had them? <laughs> Um, no, before I had kids, no, 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 no. Do you I, hate people that talked about kids all the time? Oh my I God, enough about your baby. I didn't hate them, but it's like someone that has a gluten intolerance. You're like, all right, I get it. <laughs> right. You know, but now, you know, now I have kids, so that's all I want to talk about. Sometimes I have a kid intolerance, <laughs> but it's, it's seasonal. <laughs> uh, we have Dr. Stuart J. Fishbein, the College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, published author, lecturer, and advocate who now works directly with home birthing midwives. In addition to attending general birth, he offers hope for those who cannot find supportive practitioners for VBAC, twins, and breech deliveries. Thank you for joining us on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Elliot. Also, you, you got your breakout in that movie. Uh, heads up. <laughs> yeah, I got my IMDb of, uh, uh, credit Was now, that so. your first credit? Yes, it was. Of many to come, I'm sure. Wait, what, what movie are you talking about? Uh, it's called Heads Up, the action thriller. Oh, oh that's right. Yes, <laughs> you, were you were incredible in that. vaginal breach delivery. Uh, you can find your it. Your performance was very believable. Yeah. How many really? takes? Was the back of my head good? <laughs> no. <laughs> How many takes was that birth scene for you? How many times did you make her do that? <laughs> before, you, before you had it the way you liked it. Uh, we don't, yeah, you know we don't get too many chances yeah, of that. No right. takes. And then we have Sarah Shahi and Steve Howie. Sarah, yay! Yay! <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! Sarah Shahi has appeared in numerous feature films and television series, including recently the Warner Brothers CBS espionage thriller Person of Interest, and also starred in USA Network's Fairly Legal, for which she received the 2012 Gracie Award for Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor in a Breakthrough Role. That's great. It was, yeah. I've made love to that crazy award. (laughs) (laughs) I was Uh, too much information. I I was hoping to get that crazy award, but what does a crazy award look like, by the way? What does it look like? It's it's smooth. Well, at least it is now. It has curves. Is it solid or is it like? 
It's <laughs> solid. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's solid. <laughs> okay. Right. It's Is it solid. one of your favorite awards to make love to? Um, no. There's other What's ones. Other Don't one say one? Oscar. I think the du- Dubai International Film Festival is the other one. <laughs> that one's hot. Yeah, that one's so hot. <laughs> we can take a poll. Oh, hey, oh, God. Sarah will also be playing the iconic crime solving gumshoe Nancy Drew in a totally rebooted take of the classic detective series for CBS Drew, which I'm really That's excited big. about. That is big, by the way. That's really cool. It's huge, and I also hate reading, so it'll be nice for your me next to birthday. make up. Your next birth time. is going to cost you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's yep. the next podcast about how vasectomies happen after <laughs> twin After birth. twins? Yeah. That's oh, our my God. Podcast. Did that happen already? No. 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 Resist as long as you can. But really? Yeah. Really? Okay. Why? Because you make good babies. Oh, oh, God. Everybody says that. Yeah. Nancy Drew can get pregnant, can't she? It's not even Sarah. You the Gracie what? Award is pushing for him to get the tubes tied. <laughs> 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 She's nervous. <laughs> Oh, uh, Steve Howie. Mm. Yay. Who? Currently Yay. stars on Showtime's award-winning series, Shameless, and has a long list of television and film credits. Steve was born in San Antonio, Texas, and spent his early childhood growing up on sailboats <laughs> with his parents. Steve currently enjoys riding his motorcycle, martial arts, coaching new talent, and competitive shooting. What don't we have in common? <laughs> 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 Welcome to the podcast. Uh, All right. So, why don't you read Sarah's hobbies? <laughs> well, Sarah's also from Texas. Is this true? That's true. What are your hobbies? Making babies. <laughs> <laughs> Three down. Speaking of making babies, uh, you guys have together three. That's true. So, first of all, how'd you meet? How did we meet? Oh, yeah. I was, uh, I was a guest star. He was on a show called Reba. And I was a guest star, and um, I couldn't stand him. (laughs) And uh, I'll give you the line because it's my favorite line, and it's the one that got me. So we went out. We went out to eat. Uh, I couldn't stand him, but of course I still like went out with him. And he looked at me, and he grabbed my face, and he looked into my eyes, and he said, "As long as I have a face, you have a place to sit." (laughs) <laughs> it was our first date that's so, funny. so romantic yeah. i know i i and thought i was the only one he said that to yeah oh, oh well I can't, wait to hear, I can't wait to hear how he proposed oh <laughs> so through a pie in your face true story really well because yeah. when i was what about, kind of pie when i was 13 i kind of made this agreement with myself that whoever threw a pie in my face was the man i was going to marry oh yeah so I and I would tell this to various boyfriends and I would have guys that would send me pies. They'd buy me a piece of pie. They'd ask me, would you like a pie? And it was just it was never, you know, it's like, no, you have to just have the fucking balls. Throw the goddamn pie in my face. And then nobody um, would do it. Nobody did it. That just seems so easy. <laughs> I know. Right. And nobody did it. Everyone thought it was like a. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I it was on my 27th birthday. He got the pie, and I had, like, my family was in town. Everyone was at the house. It was great. And then I remember I was, I, like, walked into a room, and he was standing right on the other side, and he just, it just went right in the face. Good shot. And, and yeah. Pictures? Are there pictures of this? There are pictures. Yeah. There I are want pictures. pictures. Yeah, I'll give you some pictures. Can we, yeah. can we podcast a picture? Yeah, of the pie? Of the, I guess. What like kind of pie? For our, because we have just, a, it was just a whip. It was like a like a can of fake pie. Whip, whipped cream. Oh, you made just a whi- okay. It was just a whipped cream yeah. thing, but I'm just saying we can probably get a pie sponsor. <laughs> it's like a Mrs. Doubtfire situation, right? Yeah, exactly. Mrs. Doubtfire, she just like, pie starts ripping. But Very yeah, nice. that's so yeah. sweet. My husband proposed. It was so romantic. I was peeing on one of those sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and oh my, I, I could cry thinking about it. Um, he said, I have a question for you in three minutes. <laughs> or I don't have a question for you in three minutes. <laughs> so, really? Are you serious? So sweet. I mean, don't make me, don't make me cry. No, it's great. I'm, I'm getting teary-eyed because I think we can also get a stick sponsor. So yeah, this is we exciting. should. This is going to be a, a rich podcast. First, he is a marketing genius. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> first response. First responders. And, uh, and lifesavers. Because did he have a ring? Yes, he did. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. If Just you in call case. it a ring. I mean, I right? Am I right, ladies? I don't know. I think I'm sure. Lemon lime? I don't care. I really don't care. How long were you together before you got married? Before we got uh, seven years. 
It's a long oh. time. Is it really? Who is who is holding? I mean, in I'm Orthodox Jewish, it's like more yeah. than seven minutes, and it's like, what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> is it gonna yeah. work out? I don't know. Wait, what? What's the question? Yeah, uh, who who is holding back? Was one of you? I don't know. You know, it was none of us were holding. No, back. we were just having fun. Career we were just traveling, taking off. and you it know? was just yeah, like marriage was never something I had to do. Actually, kids were never anything I had to do. I never wanted to get married. I never wanted to have kids. Look at us now. I know. And uh, and I was just very happy to go along being this, you know, just a uh, boyfriend, girlfriend. And I think the only reason we got married... Because you got pregnant. No. Oh. <laughs> well, kind of. Kind of. But um, he proposed. You proposed in Hawaii. And the proposal was... Bye. Uh, no, the proposal... He get he's like, we're out to dinner, but he's not even he won't even look at me. He won't even, I mean, acknowledge me. Like he won't talk to me. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But he won't even look at me. And then, um, and then the waitress came by and he orders this really great uh, bottle of champagne. And I'm like, well, if you don't like the place, we can go because he won't look. He won't make eye contact. And then he gets down on one knee and he goes, it's time. I'm like, it's time. It's time for what? What is the time for? Do you remember this? Oh yeah, and then he said, <laughs> and then he said, uh, he said, we're not getting any older, and I'm or any younger. We're not getting any younger, <laughs> and I'm like, it's time, and we're not getting any younger. What are you talking about? I'm like, what do you what? And I'm like, Steve, whatever it is, it's not that big of a deal. Just say it. <clears throat> and he was like, okay, will you marry me? And. I went, what? <laughs> what? It was kind of like my reaction when Dr. Stu told us we were having twins, actually. It was really similar to that. And I remember that day. Just as yeah. shocking. And, Less uh, cuss words. You cussed a lot more when you found out you were having twins. Oh, we yeah. We were having twins. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was... Oh, no. I really wish we had that recorded. But yeah, there we go. I think we 13 should years later. It. We should try to recreate it soon. Let's recreate how the, con- <laughs> how the twins were conceived. Let's just recreate. <laughs> well, it, it was... It, Do you have it, a turkey baster? <laughs> It ended with me like doing a handstand with my legs up in the air, like one of those things. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So, hmm. like me every night, basically. That's our foreplay. <laughs> How did it begin? <laughs> what gymnastics were involved? Yeah. So you did the whole thing where you put your legs over your head. I did. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. just. I was. I really. That's the twins you're talking about. Yeah. We have so. jumped ahead. Yeah. How soon after uh, you got married did you have a wolf? Your first about four months. You conceived. You had him. Had him. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. We, we, Shotgun we, wedding. So it was yeah. like, oh, okay, it's time. We're not getting any older. And... We got engaged. We were engaged for about a year and a half. Oh, before that. We were okay. engaged for a year and a half before we got pregnant, and then the only reason we got married is because there was a uh, party promoter guy in Vegas that said he would throw us a great big like if I opened up a club, then he would fly twenty of my friends and family in for this club. And he said, well, why don't we just get married? And I said, okay, sure. So then we got married at the Elvis Chapel, and they paid for everything, and it was great. That's great. We have, I mean, my whole purpose in bringing you to the podcast was to see if you wanted to have a fourth kid. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> we'll fly a couple of your friends out. We to, have the uh, award, too, if that gets you guys in the mood. <laughs> That's true. We have, we have a whole case of Bring awards. it out. <laughs> Set them we have a whole green. case of awards. Right. I think I walked into the wrong podcast. <laughs> We're getting to that. Oh, oh, okay. You're here. We're almost up to the reproductive era. It's four months after the uh, nuptials. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. okay. So Yeah, and we did a home birth with Wolf. Yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, that's 1% of the population does a home birth. So it's uh, each one, I find each one has a story. So what did you think about birth? When did you decide home birth versus hospital and why? Well, we were, we were just a normal couple that was pregnant. And we went into and met an OBGYN and we were having our schedule meetings and we're talking about our birth plan and the hospital that we were going to go to and the room that we were going to get and all that. And then one of our friends, one of Sarah's friends, uh, um, I think she just had a home birth, right? She had, she had one and she's like, you guys got to, you know, watch this movie. Ricky Lake had that movie, the business of being born. Yeah, also very good acting. Great. And, <laughs> and, uh, we saw that and we were like, huh? Okay, so this is, we didn't even know it was possible. To have a baby at home? To have a baby. We, on purpose. On, on purpose. purpose, yeah. yeah. It's, all the it, it's, it's, it's not, you know, the information is not it can only happen uh, by accident. If- readily available. And we were just like, I think a lot of people 
we were uh, uninformed, unaware, and fearful because of no birth is you're supposed to do the, the hospital. So as we had uh, more time to think about it, we did more research. We started uh, talking, and one of my uh, best friends that I went to high school with, his mom is a doula, Yvonne Novak. Oh, and super doula. We talked. We talked to her, and she was just like you know, just amazing and open and so positive and so enthusiastic. And it started giving us more courage and it was really Sarah's decision. And she just said, I, I want to do this. And I was like, all right, I got your back. That's and what I told her when I met her. That's you, right. and, and you <laughs> did. I said, all right, I got your back. You did have my back. I yeah. should remember the, the day I met you both. I'm going to get there in a minute. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah. And then we started um, uh, meeting uh, midwives and, mm -hmm. and we met Davey and, David so I, you, mm -hmm. you guys were on 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 the same page at the same time for home birth. It took a while to get there. For it's, both of you? Not for me. I mean, for me, it was pretty instant. You know, once I I talked to my friend, and I, the thing with me is, I, yeah, I had a I had an OBGYN, and um, I was going to her very regularly, and me being pregnant was a really big deal for she and I. And, you know, she said she was going to clear her whole month of July so she could be there for me. And and she made me feel very special. And um, and then I was working with this producer who I was on a show at the time and the producer. And I said, well, what happens if I go into labor and I'm at work? And they're like, oh, it never happens like that. You schedule your C-section. You go in. The baby's out 10 minutes later. You come back to work. Like, it's just wow. it, it's over like that. And I just thought, wait a minute. Hold on. That's not what I want it's not what I envisioned and and at that point I was probably eight weeks pregnant you know I just just found out I was pregnant and and then my girlfriend yeah that's how that's exactly how it was and and my girlfriend did this home birth and she told us about the video so then I watched the video and I just felt I felt such a connection to you know my body and what I was meant to do and my mom had three births um at the hospital but she didn't use any pain medication or any what are they called epidurals sure yeah they didn't she didn't use anything they're all natural and vaginal and I thought why not of course I can do this I'm no less than anybody else in this video I can do this and he in the beginning was a little apprehensive you know because he you know it's birth it's his first child our first child you know what if something happens and it's the most divided my family and I, my family is in Texas. My family and I have ever been was over home birth because my mom and I are very close. Your mom wasn't into it? She was worried about you? She was scared. Yeah. She was really scared. And I remember I, I sent... Do you know about your birth? I know it was in the hospital. And I know it, she did it without anything. No drugs? No drugs. You know. Did she but have she a had good experience? In, I'm sorry? Did she have a good experience? She had a great experience. But... but you know, it's different. My mom was a foreigner. You know, she had been in this country for a year before she had me. So there was a whole language mm -hmm. thing. Where is she from? Iran. Both my parents are Persian. And um, so her experience, though, it was good. It was there was still some fear involved because she was out of her element, you know. Mm -hmm. But the body does what the body does. And and her whole thing was have it natural, but please have it in a hospital. That's in what case, she wanted for you. Yeah. In case something goes wrong. I'm like, but nothing's going to go wrong. And I'm making this decision and you really can't say stuff like that to me after I make this decision. So we were very divided. And I remember this one time where I, I meant to send the text message to Steve, but I accidentally sent it to my mom. And it was like, it's really unfortunate that my mom is such a bitch right now and I can't share <laughs> oh. any of this with her. Remember that? And I accidentally sent it to my mom. Oh, and, you know, <laughs> a, as I push send, I'm like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. But you can't unsend. And uh, and that was kind of a blessing in disguise because she she softened after that. We never talked about it, oh. but her attitude changed. She I just really I'm going to try that. Wow. My I'm going to yeah. text yeah. my mom right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is not meant for you. But also this is meant for my husband. Right, you right, right. You don't preface it. I'm, I'm doing it incorrectly. I have some choice emojis I'm sending my mother over here right now. <laughs> totally messed up. Oh. But oh, and also I should mention my stepdad is a doctor. What kind? What kind? A GP. Just the that's what they're called, right? right? Just mm -hmm. general. Yeah, okay. Um and um yeah, so he was also full of fear factors. Lots of fear factors. And um but yeah, but we went but you were on board. I was so on, on board. On board. I was so hardcore on board. Steve was almost on board. 
I I had to yeah we met the doula we met Yvonne she gave us a lot of information it was just information I just and you kept, were working with a midwife you were looking at midwives originally. we were looking at midwives we interviewed midwives met David Kalsa fell in head over heels for for Davy and um and we started and I switched over at 16 weeks I remember I asked my OB um I had a set of questions I went in and I said okay if she I'm gonna I'm gonna test her if she passes this test maybe I'll I'll stay with her I might stay with her. Right. But it was questions like, um, can I deliver in any position I want to? And she said, well, no. And I said, well, why not? And she kind of looked at me like, where is this going? And she said, well, because I need to be in a position where I can catch the baby. And I said, well, why can't you just catch the baby no matter what position I'm in? And she just didn't answer. And then I said, okay, all right, all right. It's not well, like the orientation changes of where things are. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, you know I mean? <laughs> right. It may not be right in her face, but if your head's there, the baby's going to be over yeah. there. And is that true? Am I making that up? Well, she flunked geometry when she that's was in. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, you, know. you always wonder why geometry is going to be important <laughs> right. later on. And that's why. And that's so why. Yeah, a a, 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 tr a triangle to. could be a pyramid or it could be a chalice, I guess, right? <laughs> well, yeah. Chalice. No, chalice. It is, it is, it is, it is. Listen, as somebody who did, worked in the hospital for 28 years before I left, um, it was, you know, the first, all you've seen it, all the first breaches I did, I did them all with somebody on their back because it was oriented to the way I was comfortable doing things. And, yeah. uh, you know, then I realized that, uh, the, the trend is to be on all fours now, or at least let a woman go in any position she wants to a birth stool, all fours, whatever. And, and so that's okay. But it, 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 you know, when you're only used to doing one thing, one thing, one way, it's sort of uncomfortable. Plus the whole idea of natural childbirth to your physician was probably a little bit outside her box. Yeah. Do you spend more right. money now on chiropractors? Since you support birth and you should position. know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I do. That's why I support birth and name position. Uh, yes, I'll, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a silent sponsor of this podcast. Right. Actually, jo <laughs> join the club. <laughs> so am I. So no, uh, um, you want yeah. to deliver in any position? You yeah, want to she do. said no. And then I asked her. I said, "Well, what if I get hungry?" And she's like, "Well, you can suck on some ice." And I'm like, "But what if I'm hungry?" And she's like, "Well, you might vomit." And I'm like, "But you're a doctor. What's wrong with vomit?" <laughs> and I just didn't understand. You know, it was like the and the, but the pieces were really. You know, everything was falling into place for me. I understood where I was like, okay, now, yeah, I see how this is. This relationship is not going to work for me anymore. And and breaking up with her was actually kind of hard. hard. It was a little bit because you she didn't had. Have Steve do it. Did no. you text Steve? God, my OB is such a bitch right did you now. Did you text the OB? Did you text the OB? Instead? <laughs> I love my OB, but she's being such a bitch such right a now. Bitch. <laughs> but honestly, it was the best decision I ever made, and. You know, and when I, we were, Wolf hadn't turned. He was 32 weeks and he hadn't turned. And he was breech. He was breech. And there was always this issue. You know, Steve is 6'4 and I'm 5'4. And um, I remember we saw Dr. Crane at one point and he was like, well, we might have to be a little bit more involved with your baby um, than you would like. And I said, why? And he goes, well, your baby might be a little too big for you to deliver. And I go, well, but I thought my body won't produce a baby that I couldn't deliver naturally. And, you know, it was another one of those looks hmm. that I got from the doctors and, and, um, and Yvonne, I told Yvonne, she's like, that's horseshit. Don't listen to him. And, um, and then we came to you. Yes. Yes. And we met. And we met. And on my intake form, it says name and then nickname. <laughs> and you put What's Sarah your... Shahi. What's, your... what? What's the nickname? Well, she put <laughs> cutie pie. Is that what you put? <laughs> and Do you so this? I didn't even know that. Because a lot of times <laughs> the women come alone to the office. I didn't even know they got next, like, next to you was your husband. And I thought I'd just be funny. And I, I came out and I'm like, cutie pie, cutie pie. And you're like, oh, that's me. And Steve like basically got up with his muscles flexed. Like, who the hell is this guy? No, no. You know what? This no, is that's, a, that's very a, that was accurate. Surprise look. <laughs> that was pretty no, accurate. but you know, this interest, and this is why like Steve and I, now that we have 13 kids. And, yes, orthodox. You know, and, and we talk about vasectomy and stuff. The, the the best I've ever felt in my life is when I'm pregnant. Really? The first time or with the twins? Every time. You love being pregnant. I love being pregnant. And and even with the twins, I mean, I was nauseous uh, 24 hours a day for the first 13 weeks. Nothing I did made it go away. Hmm. You know, Dr. Acid Fishbein reflux. and everybody else told me to eat. I'm like, I don't want to eat. I can't eat. I want to vomit when I eat. But they're like, eat. Hmm. It, it, you That's know, never it's like, happened to me. <laughs> People are like, come on, eat, eat, just eat. 
Never but, happens. But I but I loved it. I loved every part of it. And this is, you know, from somebody who never wanted to have kids. Yeah. And so so yeah, so I just when I'm pregnant, like I I wrote Cutie Pie because I felt I just felt, felt so good. alive. I felt yeah. so playful. I felt you know, I don't just know. Just say I, it, horny. Just say yeah, it. Right. Just say it already. No, I, mean, I don't know. I just, I just felt wow, I, very I, much alive. I felt like I was in tune with my purpose, if that makes any sense, you know. And well, I think it kind of is. Like we only have every living thing has four things in common, right? We are born a, a cycle. There's a life cycle. We're born, we get bigger, uh, we reproduce, and we die. Yeah, you can't really control very much birth getting bigger. We're dying, so like reproducing seems to be the main event. You know what I mean? Everything else seems like icing on the cake. So <laughs> I think that when you when you feel that, when you get in touch with that, your your purpose on the planet. We're just here for like a minute. Exactly. Yeah. And when you feel your purpose on the planet, a, a lot of women through our practice express that. Yeah. And then some of them are like, I feel like absolute total crap and right. I'm never doing this again. Right. And then two years later they forget and do it again. Right. How'd you right. feel, Kira, during your pregnancy? You know, I traveled uh, like I normally did, you know, as a comic, I'm on the road. And so I just, I didn't stop, which I was worried and nervous. And I asked, you know, my doctor and, and he was like, just do what you do. Just if you're already traveling, that's what you're comfortable with. And so I went to South Africa with my first pregnancy. I went to Israel with my second pregnancy and then everywhere in between, you know, just domestically, obviously, you know, the longer in gestation I went I didn't go overseas did you have to get any shots when you went to no no but I I wouldn't have anyway yeah but I I just I just did what I did and I so it sounds like you felt the same I felt really good yes yeah. yes I mean I felt I didn't feel like I was a cutie pie let's be honest no. well I, did you have a nickname just, that you put on your intake forms a uh, disappointment to my parents but oh. it's so long it doesn't flow <laughs> that makes sense it doesn't flow as as nicely as other ones. Is there a Yiddish word for that? Is there? Uh, I'm sure there <laughs> the is. The opposite uh, of nachas. I think, all, I think most of the Yiddish words most stand of, for that. <laughs> yeah. When they spit at you, everyone's like, put, 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 that's for good luck. No, it's because mm. they're disappointed. That could be your nickname. They're spitting, yeah, put, 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 put. I walk out and your husband, put, put, put. Oh, that's my wife. <laughs> no, I, I did feel good. I can totally relate. But I also uh, have a little bit of like a, a workaholic syndrome going and I didn't want to stop which I think I probably pushed myself a little too much I mean I did shoot a comedy special seven, seven months, months pregnant. pregnant did you think ever of not having a baby at the hospital I did um I we also saw the the, the power, business of being born the business of being born the power of being born yeah. the business of being born my husband and I both watched it we loved it we thought it was great and then um I don't know what changed, but we just kind of went down the route of of a hospital birth. Uh, the first one, I I was just sent down the corridor that everybody talks about. My baby was 10 days late, so they put me on Pitocin, which led to epidural, and then I was on heroin. That was my choice. Oh. And then I, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. I know. But you know, it just that, down that corridor. But you I must told. Have the premium insurance. <laughs> I know. Mine doesn't even cover band aids. <laughs> but I told my doctor, I said, this baby is coming out through the lobby, not the sunroof. Nice. I told him, I go, I don't care. I'll be here until I don't, I'll go out into the parking lot if you kick me out. So I pushed for three hours, which wow. I'm sure is pretty unheard of, right? Don't they? Not for you. you. Well, not for you. You probably are cool with that. But most doctors are like, mm, tick tock. I got a tea time. But I just push. I, I go, I'm, it's through the lobby or, I'm, or I'll leave. I told him. So he's like, all right, relax. So pushed him out vaginally. And then the second one, no drugs. Z I mean, I seriously could have delivered her on my own. That they, that really is not a joke when people say, be careful with the second. It was Came so, fast. so fast, so fast. And I had a duel and I was on all P -p -p fours and I was, you know, I, I had completely different. Was it all that births. by choice or just because it went totally, fast? Totally, because I went down that Pitocin route oh, you didn't want to do and it again. epidural route. But still didn't think home birth. Like maybe I didn't. this baby is coming out in the living room. I don't, th yeah, it could have. I don't think I have the nuts the cojones yeah. the yites as they say in russian you don't. i don't you're right why am i being so hard on myself yeah um i don't it's have so funny. The, you can stand up the, in front of a huge crowd of people and yes and you have the bravery to do that but 
stay home in your own living room and maybe that's what you yes. out of maybe you needed a bunch of people I in your living room needed. yeah you probably <laughs> drinking were like and 30, eating 40 people rednecks. Food. yes oh. it's a, it's actually Baby a very three. good point because she is a stand-up and so she's probably more comfortable on stage and bunch in front of a bunch of people yes if you were on stage you probably could have given the birth that's why <laughs> that's why you're better at the hospital it's Look, exactly like you have to have another one now. you get the spotlight wow. on your this is so true it's the lobby so the spotlight you got the spotlight the lobby and random people do a special it would be great oh my god I actually delivery. a special in the delivery room. Special delivery. Oh, oh my, god. my god! You're welcome. I gotta give you gotta everyone have one more You gotta surrogate. Maybe you can surrogate if you don't want to have your own. Ten percent, by the way. That's 10. right. Yes. Fifty. Yeah. That doesn't 50. make math. Love make math. Sense. Sense. <laughs> I'll give fifty percent. That works. <laughs> I don't do well at math. That's we got another comic. sponsor. You know what? You guys are totally onto something. Special because delivery. I was cracking jokes, and my husband was like, "Delivery special." Can you stop? Joking around for just a couple of minutes <laughs> because nurses would come in. I'd be like, "Ooh, a new nurse hasn't heard this bit before," and I would make crack jokes. And he's like, "Why do you have to make people laugh while you're dilating and crapping yourself? Can you focus on what you're Perfect. doing?" Perfect. Wait a second. Why wouldn't you make jokes if I you're know, dilating I, and crapping I yourself? You, I have a What's the alternative? I have a sickness. I have to you like have to talk jokes. to people. There was one nurse who every time she came in. Um, I called her the vagina whisperer and I gave people nicknames and I just, That's I like to, you know, when the beekeeper came in with a second kid and she, oh my God, I sent her out. I go, get the hell out of here with your Ebola costume. I'm like, I can smell call it a hazmat bird. the hazmat. Yeah. Was she coming in full, full headgear and head to toe? Is that normal? Is that, is At the that hospital. They, you know, a lot of hospitals. Fairly normal. Say. A lot of hospitals still yeah. still drape a pregnant uh, woman in stirrups. They put drapes over them. They still sometimes they prep their yonis, whatever you want to call them. What does that with mean? With iodine. Iodine. When yeah. the whole they prep oh. down there, your lungs. Yeah. They when the whole point is really to expose the baby to the bacteria and you're killing the bacteria. Right. It's, it, it's it, 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 there's no backwards. common sense in a lot of things, the way things are done in, in labor and delivery. You know, by the way, I was going to ask you when you had your epidural and you pushed for three hours, did, could you actually feel like pushing or do they just tell you that you're completely dilated and okay. it's time to push. Here's what happened. So I had an epidural, but uh, I don't know. This anesthesiologist was like a non-union anesthesiologist. Goodness. It wore off. Oh. I felt everything. I asked my husband, I go, we got to get another epidural. And he's like, those things are expensive. <laughs> and I said, "You get a Groupon for epidurals, God damn it!" You probably can. So I, but they didn't. They wouldn't give me any more. So I felt everything. But I did do because I am a crunchy tree hugger hippie. I did do um, hypnobirthing, so that helped. I used that for both both births. You drive a Prius? Yes, I drive I'm a just, Prius. Because no, Toyota's a sponsor. Uh, but hypnobirthing, anyone listening, I. I, I don't know if you guys are into it or if you believe in it, but what is it? What what is it? You, Hypnob- just, you didn't hear of it's, it's, I've it's heard of it, but I just hypnosis kinda, for birth. I just did yeah, my own thing. You can like so you say that you hypnotize yourself. Really, it's just it concentrated it deep. It's breathing. meditation. It's more of meditation. It's meditation. Oh, okay. But it's but meditation I, around birth. My wife used to listen to these uh, as she was falling asleep every night. You know. Yes. Take a deep breath in, breathe out, relax. You know, get in touch, and you can feel your muscles relaxing. And I would do it too. I would start to relax, and then all of a and she would say, and now picture yourself inside your uterus. And I just <laughs> wake up like a nightmare, jump out of bed. Because you go back happened, into your mom's uterus. I, was, I think I was in my uterus. Wow, that's so <laughs> meta. must have been a past life. I mean, I don't think I have a uterus. I got the boobs. <laughs> Maybe. So I, that was my closest to having a home birth was right. no drugs, hypno birthing myself. And yelling at um, a medical student. But you had a good experience. Great. I loved it. I'm so glad it was different from my first. Yeah. So happy. That poor student is still traumatized. (laughs) Get the hell out of here. She told my doctor, she's like, wow, your patient's kind of high maintenance. (laughs) Really, beekeeper? Really? You know, it's funny, Sarah. You said you wanted one of your measures of whether to stay with the OB or go home is can I deliver in any position I want to? Um, Our first kid was born at the hospital, 42 hour labor. Completely unmedicated, except for maximum strength Advil that I kept taking every four hours. And then um, (laughs) our second kid, two hours. We were at the hospital for maybe 20 minutes before she popped out. Um, And then for our third kid, we thought about doing home birth, but we like already had two kids in a very small 900 square foot closet. And it just didn't feel right. So we went to the hospital. And we didn't have bad hospital birth experiences. But at that point, as a doula, I'd been going to home births and... 
seeing like there really can be so magical. Um, I felt like we had home birth at the hospital and then I realized you can't because one of the key ingredients in home birth is being at home. And it's yeah. just a different environment yeah. completely. Does, does every home birth have to have the pool? Or is that no. just an option? No. 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 Did you have a pool? I did. I had, yeah, I had the first, our first was in the pool and then our daughter came out in the pool. I I loved the water. I mean, I remember I, I mean, I jumped in the tub before there was ever, yeah, before there was ever any just air. water. You had in an it. air birth? There was just, it was air in the beginning. Mm. I remember he tried to check me and I pushed his head away. I'm like, no, I want the pool. And he's like, okay, you can't get in the pool. It's not full. I'm like, yes, I can. <laughs> and I just got in the pool and, and, and Dr. Stu was like, okay, Steve, fill it up. <laughs> and, um, our son, the baby, baby, he was breached. So we were in the bed for him. We came out. That was your third. That was the, yes, the third. Yeah, so our third baby, we, you know, there's groupie strep, which probably right. should be a whole podcast by itself. But uh, my wife was positive for it with the third and not the first two. I was were. positive for it with the twins. Did you get it after Remember? having lunch at our house? <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, <laughs> what did you serve? Yeah, as well. Groupie strep. They serve it. They serve groupie strep. Yeah, it's delicious with chickpeas. Um, How did you guys? Um, what did you do? Did you go for the antibiotics? Yeah, did so you they do the said, garlic? What they did you said do? like come in because our second birth was two hours. They just said come in right away. I didn't really even know yet. I was just getting into all the holistic stuff. I come from a pretty medical background, so and my wife isn't really she wasn't all that natural to begin with. She just didn't want a big fat needle in her spine, so she's like, let me do this without that. Yeah. That's why we had no drugs on the first one, uh, too. And then for this one, they were like, you better come in right away. You're, you know, or your baby's you know, going to get this big infection and die because you have groupie strep. And so because the first one was so fast, as soon as we had like three or four contractions in a row, we we're like, we better get to the hospital. So we went there and they checked her maybe three centimeters, gave her a shot of antibiotics, checked her an hour later, and she was only three and a half centimeters. And they kept putting all this pressure on us, like, you're dilating so slowly. I'm like, labor just started an hour ago. You know, we waited nine months. Can we just wait a little bit more? And they wanted to break her water, and they wanted to, like, get things moving. And I, we, we just talked about it. We said, can we just go home? Like, we got the antibiotics. We live 10 minutes away. Can we just go home? And the doctor was so upset. He's like, if you're not going to let me do anything, you might as well just go home. Wow. Like, okay, great. So we went home, four or five hours, hanging out with the kids, putting them down for bed. Then things really kicked in, so we came back, and within about 40 minutes of getting there, the baby came, but my wife was on all fours, and that's yeah. what reminded me about the position. She was on all fours, and she was just so comfortable for transition on all fours. I mean, I don't know if she was so comfortable, but that was the position that she chose. That's how I delivered mine, too. That on was, all fours? Yeah. Yeah, you guys have, like, the same. The second. Pretty much the same. Yeah. The first two were on all fours. The Knox was on my back, yeah. The breach. Mm -hmm. Why did you want me on my back, by the way? Really, because at that point, um, it had been a while, and it uh, Knox's heart rate, if you remember, was sort of starting to do some funky things toward the end there. Oh, that's right. I remember you said something. So he I could manipulate. I could do things if I needed to do things in that position, because I flunked geometry, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, if I had to put forceps on or if I had to in the back. reach in and pull and pull the arms out, like we had to. That's right. You know, I've watched that video uh, like I've a, watched a thousand it a times. a million right? times. Right. You're so, right. Uh, yeah, no Knox's, yeah. Knox's birth, yeah. It's on my phone. You want to watch it? Yeah. It's a <laughs> <laughs> There's some, fo some foul language going on there, oh. too. You, so you reached in with your hands. It was like Frankenstein. Yeah, I'll show you after. I yeah. would love... Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously? If Sarah said yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I'm like, are you going to no. ask me? It's my no. vagina. It's exactly. on YouTube, Sarah, to be honest with you. I did, because you were going to use it for teaching yeah. purposes. That's and I was like... And, that's and, and, my, and my face was... isn't really... You don't really see my face. There's just, a, there's, just at the end. It's at like the very end. when he when he comes up on my and it's just like from here down. I'm going oh, like yeah. that, yeah. and and that's that it. And then it cuts out. Right. I remember but that's it was where like, I first saw it was on Twitter for, <laughs> for, for, for teaching purposes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hashtag cutie pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag cutie pie. Exactly. That concludes part one of our double standard podcast. Be sure to share with your friends and visit us at informedpregnancy.com for other great pre and postnatal information. And come back to check out Parts 2 and Parts 3 for the rest of the discussion. Whoa! Doctor, doctor, give me the news I got.